Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sudarshan. I work at Qualcomm in the Linux kernel development team. And the topic of uh, my presentation is uh, uh, dynamic way of offline media segments uh, for power reduction. So um, <clears throat> the general uh, idea or motivation is uh, uh, with increasing DDR sizes in the mobile systems these days, uh, with more and more segments coming in, there's more uh, power consumptions by this DDR. And if you have just a, 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 a limited certain uh, certain size of the DDR being used, for example, let's say 4 GB or of your 24 GB DDR, uh, it kind of makes sense to uh, you know collapse or or offline some of the other segments that are unused to save power. And as you can see here in the trend, um, almost a decade ago, the DDR sizes for the mobile system was about like four to five, so there wasn't much significant memory that you can offline, but these days, uh, you have DDR up to like 24 and 24 plus uh, GB. Um, so there's good amount of uh, segments that you can offline when a uh, system doesn't need, uh, you know, much of the memory. Um, so yeah, I mean, for example, if you have 16 GB DDR and then, you know, in your mobile system, if you're doing just light usage of the system, such as browsing, messaging, uh, you know, video uh, phone calls or such, uh, and if you're using just 4 GB of memory in a 16 GB DDR, uh, you can actually Turn off the self-refresh kind for other, uh, you know, 12 GB of your RAM uh, to save power over the DDR days. So uh, that's the whole general motivation. And then, as per this trend, uh, with more and more increased size of the DDR, kind of makes more, uh, you know, saving memory on the DDR days by offlining some segments makes more significant. Um, <clears throat> so I think the two. Um, Technologies we to used uh, for DDR offlining is uh, PASR, and uh, which is partial array self refresh, and FRD, which is full rank down. Um, so PASR, uh, you know, uh, in the left side, like uh, you know, for example, if you have a 16 GB symmetric DDR, uh, AGB rank zero, AGB rank one, and you just offline certain segments in that particular rank, so it's like partial array or partial segment self refresh, uh, where other partial part of the uh, rank has been in self refresh and not other ones. So that is uh, the password technology. Uh, and the full rank down is uh, where you have the entire rank been shut down. So the entire VDD to the particular rank has been cut off. So there's a significant power reduction there. Uh, so these are the two technologies that we use to uh, offline segments in DDR. So yeah, uh, the basic idea is you know, if you have a larger RAM and if you're using just uh, limited. Uh, uh, memory in, in that RAM, uh, we can go ahead and then offline some segments to save power. Um, so when do we offline and when do we on online? Uh, we can offline when, let's say there's no user interactions and there's a hint that you know, there's no memory requiring app that's going to run. Uh, for example, let, let's say as simple as screen off uh, or, or DOS. So DOS is more of an Android concept where if you have like 30 minutes of inactivity, uh, the system enters into DOS, it turns off the networking and other subsystems. So that's a good uh, that's a good place where you can offline some segments, and when do we online them back? Uh, you know, for example, if there's a screen on, uh, or there's a memory requiring app that's been running in the background, there's a memory pressure being built up in the system, and then the system kind of requires more memory, and that's when we bring the uh, blocks online. Um, <clears throat> so there's a feature called memory hot plug in the next kernel. Uh, it's same as the CPU hot plug, uh, where we Hot add and hot plug, uh, hot plug in and hot plug out uh, memory, just like the DIMMs. Uh, so we use memory hot plug in the Linux kernel for software offlining, uh, for page isolation and, and migration. Um, so we use uh, something called movable zone to host this offline build region in a given uh, DDR RAM. Um, so the, the Linux kernel actually divides the whole RAM into different zones, uh, such as normal zone, mobile zone, uh, DMA zone, et cetera. So why we use mobile zone is it kind of guarantees that the uh, uh, you know the pages can be moved, and why we need we, why we need that is uh, we want to make sure that if you offline a particular segment, there's no active pages there, and even if it's there are active pages, we want to migrate them out to some other place. So mobile zone kind of guarantees that those pages can be migrated. So it's uh, something that guarantees most. So we use mobile zone for that. Um, so there are different usage. Uh, Power same mode, uh, you know, if you know it's a UI user option, when you enable it, we can enable this memory offline feature. And nighttime mode, where we know that there's no uh, user activity there, and we know that there won't be any memory requiring, uh, you know, apps that be running. And low low battery mode, that's when you can also turn on your uh, 
you know, pass the savings. And the normal mode where even if the system is active, the screen is on and, and you're doing some activity, uh, but you require only, you are taking only few GBs of your memory and then you can turn off some other segments. So that's another place where we can enable this feature. Um, so now we now we know that we have this uh, DDR technologies to disable uh, to offline DDR segments in the hardware, but how do we know when to offline? How do we know when to bring them online? And how do we manage all those things? So that's the basic uh, basically the memory pressure detection, and it's uh, it's done by using something called as PSI pressure store information. Um, so that's this is actually the core of uh, this feature. So pressure store information is is uh, something that's introduced in Linux 4.0. Uh, two zero on, and onwards. So what PSI does is it, it basically just uh, tracks uh, pressure processes stalling for a particular resource such as I/O memory or CPU, and it tells how much what is the total amount of time uh, that the processor is stalling, or what are the averages, uh, what is the stall during these averages, or what are the average stall during this duration of uh, 10, 60, and th uh, 300 milliseconds. So that kind of gives a uh, a short term, uh, medium term, and a long term trend of the memory pressure in the system. And the user space can query it by, you know, a proc pressure memory. And PSI has this uh, feature called PSI monitor, which uh, can attract memory pressure uh, uh, in a given window. And it allows user space to actually uh, register to some events. And then it can wait uh, using poll or epoll events to, uh, to know that if there's a memory pressure above a particular threshold. So this is something that the PSI monitor gives. And uh, it, uh, so the PSI monitor only activates when uh, the process enters stall and deactivates when the process leaves the stall. So it's not like something, it's not, it doesn't sample every time. It only samples when the process enters in stall state. Um, this is one of the slides I took from uh, Surin from Google uh, describing all the PSI monitor. So if you see in the first graph, the blue line, especially uh, when, it, when it has a, st a stall, the sampling starts, and in the given window, if the if the stall is more than a particular threshold that the user has been registered, it generates an event to the user space. So this allows, uh, for example, if you want to get an event, if there's a pressure more than 100 milliseconds, you can register the, to that. And if you're doing a malloc or something, and the system is, is in the process stalling for more than 100 milliseconds, it'll, you'll get an event to the user space. So this can be kind of used to kind of monitor pressure in the system. Um, this is a very simplified uh, design uh, graph here, I mean, uh, a diagram here. So we have two um, user space uh, services, the memory pressure director and the power service here. Uh, the memory pressure director, the whole job of that is to detect uh, memory, uh, pressure going down, up and down, and it uses the PSI mechanism in the kernel. And this is purely written in C++, it's a native daemon. And the power service is a, it's a Java app that listens to Android intents such as screen off, screen on, and idle mode. And this kind of talks to a central entity uh, uh, or a central manager called as the parser manager, uh, which listens to all the requests from these clients, uh, the, the memory pressure director and the power service. And, uh, and the clients actually send requests based on priorities as well, like low, medium, and high. And the parser manager kind of decides it's like a voting mechanism where it decides which uh, uh, which service, uh, which request to honor and which uh, which uh, request not to honor. And the parser manager talks to the kernel uh, space via uh, SysFS writes and system calls, uh, such as echo offline to you know memory 15. So that's more of a, a memory hot plug uh, uh, SysFS node. And we have a kernel driver that's registered to uh, memory hot plug notifier, which notifies the driver when the memory is going offline and offline is done, and when the memory is going online and then the memory is online. Um, and then beyond that, the kernel driver talks to other subsystems to, to do the actual hardware uh, offline and online. This is a, more of a time graph here, um, like when do we enter a parser and when do we exit from parser, meaning when do we do offline and when do we come out of offline. So after boot, we wait for some idle time, and then if there's no user activity and there's no memory pressure, and if there's free memory in the system, we do a offline of low priority. And when once we receive a screen off, we do a offline of medium priority, and then when the system enters uh, dose, we do a offline of high priority. And when we exit or when we online them back is when uh, 
you know, if there's a user interaction that such as screen or, or app launch, that's when we know that, you know, it, it, there's a memory requiring use case that could run. And whenever there's a memory pressure building up in the system, we, we try to, uh, you know, bring the memory, uh, memory blocks online. So this is a graphical repetition of uh, the stalls. The black one is the overall stall, the memory stalls, or the process of stalling for memory. So you see that if we do an app launch, the stall kind of shoots up. And we have uh, two thresholds here, like 200 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds. Uh, 200 is a critical one. So if the stall is more than 200, we, we know that there's a, uh, it's a critical memory uh, requiring app has been run and, and we online made some memory there. And all the small humps over there or the app usage where it uses some bit of memory. And once the use case is done and the uh, the pressure is down and it's been idle, the system's idle in terms of memory pressure for about let's say 10 seconds. So that's a good hint or indication that uh, there's no uh, memory requiring apps and that's a good place where we can trigger some offline and let the password manager decide based on uh, free memory in the system. So power savings, um, I mean, uh, the more you offline, actually, it's the power saving is kind of linear. Uh, and, uh, and I think this goes with the trend where, uh, you know, the power saving on the DDR rails becomes more significant if you have higher DDR densities, like, you know, 24 and above, where you can do things like FRD, or like you can turn off a full rank or you can turn, turn off more segments uh, and for more power savings here. One question. Questions, yeah. One minute. Okay. So what's, uh, what's your block size for the offline? Uh, so that depends on the DDR, uh, term, uh, like the geometry actually. But usually it's like one GB is the block size. So you are uh, so you have only like 15 segments. So each GB is a block for... Yeah, each GB is a block, yeah. So that depends on if it's a Micron or Samsung DDR. So depends on the DDR geometry, but usually it's one GB is the block size. And did you see any penalty when you off online again? Yeah, because so memory we have, have made sure that... Uh, he has to rehash it, right? Yeah, so we have made sure that the, uh, like the online time is like very low, like 200 microseconds is the, is the latency when you get a memory pressure and then the, when things are like online. So yeah, we have made sure that performance wise there's no impact uh, in terms of latency and everything. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you.